Hi everyone, this is Dan, and this is One Piece uh, Water 7. This is a 3-in-1, volumes 37, 38, and 39 combined. Uh, continuing on on the Water 7 arc. I uh, took a bit of a break right here and uh, wanted to finish up the uh, Mutant Massacre series I had. Uh, so for those of you American comic book fans, you can check that out. i got a playlist going. And uh, we're going to try and uh, keep, a, keep it going here with One Piece. It's going to take me a while because uh, I've got two more of these three in ones so we've got at least nine more videos here so if you're one piece fan uh this is uh this is gonna be a lot of fun uh luckily this is a fantastic arc so i don't think i'm gonna get very tired of it anytime soon anyway last we left off uh our crew right here uh they had just found out that uh the dock workers essentially uh that they ran into when they first came to water seven an island that they are visiting to get uh their ship repaired and to find a carpenter for their crew. Uh, the 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 uh, the shipwrights that they that they ran into are actually government agents out to uh, assassinate the mayor of the island. In addition to uh, taking Nico Robin away from them, who's a member of their crew. So they run in here, and here's Luffy and uh, Zoro uh, yelling at them, figuring out. Uh, and here's Polly, who is one of the dock workers that is loyal to Iceberg, the mayor of Water Seven, and uh, he's freaking out because he's looking at his co-workers who are now uh, dressed in black and he's realizing they're the people that ambushed him in the previous volume and uh, <laughs> Rob Lucci who is the uh, leader of the crew and up until this point in time he was communicated uh, through ventriloquism through his uh, pigeon uh, but now he's revealing that he never really needed to do that that was just kind of a way to disguise his uh, his identity uh, so he absolutely crushes Polly in one go uh, and right when he's about ready to explain to him uh, and uh, and basically assassinate him, Luffy's able to stop him. Uh, but Luffy finds out that he's no match for Ra uh, Rob Lucci. Uh, he almost gets murdered in the first couple pages or so. Uh, and then we get to the other side of the this chapter's conflict, which is Luffy uh, yelling at Robin and asking her, Hey, why are you leaving our crew? Because if you remember in the previous videos, uh, she kind of explained that she, she was leaving the crew without really giving a reason. And she still doesn't really give a reason here, but she just says that she needs to accomplish her goal, and so she's leaving the crew and heading on their way. Uh, and <laughs> move further forward, and essentially the it's the Straw Hats versus CP9, and uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> the Straw Hat pirates do not do well at all. Uh, CP9 basically crushes them uh, fairly easily. In fact, for the, for the most part, uh, Robin is able to escape very easily. You see Zoro here gets absolutely wrecked by Kaku, uh, the dude with the, basically the, uh, the square nose. And then uh, this particular chapter ends on a, on a bit of a cliffhanger with the revelation, going into this one right here, that uh, Rob Lucci has uh, uh, devil fruit powers. And his particular one is what they call a Zoan style uh, devil fruit. And what these are are devil fruits that give you animal-like powers. So in his case, his is the cat cat fruit uh, leopard model. So he's a leopard leopard man, I guess if you wanted to call it that way in uh, Oda terms, right? So uh, essentially these uh, Zoan type devil fruits give them uh, a boost in power relative to the animal that they have, right? So uh, Ra basically kicks the damn building in half. And uh, as they, as they uh, attempt to escape... Uh, he massacres Polly, Iceberg, uh, Luffy, and uh, and Zoro. He actually kicks Luffy <laughs> freaking clear out of the damn city and uh, sends uh, sends Zoro out the city as well. So it's pretty crazy. And uh, Nami gets left behind uh, in all the rubble with the with the town folks. And then you see here Iceberg and uh, and uh, Polly left to burn alive right here. Pretty not a great ending for our heroes. I will say that much. And then you see here CP9. This is a great uh, use of inks right here. I like this. This is like great shadowing. Uh, and it's time to go hunt down Cuddy Flam, which is the uh, real name of Frankie, which we found on the previous issue. So moving forward, uh, they kind of hunt down Frankie's family. And that's how they're able to determine where Frankie's at. Frankie is actually, because uh, if you guys remember from the previous issue, he's still really freaking pissed off at Luffy. So he's trying to uh, essentially lure Luffy over to the warehouse district where he's at because he's kidnapped Usopp. But Frankie doesn't realize that Usopp uh, has already left the pirate crew. So, and that's what happened in uh, volume 35, yeah, 35, 
Uh, that was the big Luffy versus Usopp fight. And uh, here Usopp is just explaining, you know, what's going on and this, the, the drama that occurred in that volume. And Frankie being a very emotional character, actually, despite being enemies, is, is crying about this. So this is a, a very big uh, trademark of One Piece, uh, which is uh, the, the constant waxing back and forth between the comedic, uh, almost uh, lighthearted nature of the book and then the extremely serious nature, uh, back and forth, right? And Oda is, is very, very good at that. He's, he's kind of a storytelling savant in that regard. And his ability to move uh, and generate emotions up and down while you're reading the book. And I think a lot of it uh, can be attributed to his admittedly uh, panned uh, by some manga fans. But for me, I, I, I still don't particularly like Oda's art style. But I've come to like grow to appreciate it. It's kind of one of those acquired tastes that you get. And after a while, you're like, you know what? This is actually kind of brilliant. So his cartoony effects, the wide open mouths, the ridiculous crying and snot going down people's noses. And, and just the, the, funny, uh, the funny characters or caricatures, I should say. They, they grow on you after a while, and it kind of helps him because he has such a range of different emotions and genres that he can use in one piece that, uh, you know, other art styles may not necessarily be able to accomplish as easily. So, uh, you know, gotta, gotta note that about Oda, right? He's definitely not like the world's greatest, uh, you know, detailed artist, but uh, he knows how to tell a story with his art, and that's honestly what matters. <laughs> So anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> goddamn Frankie, <laughs> this, this freaking character makes me die every time I read him. So anyway, uh, Usopp is kind of explaining what's going on with the boat and everything, and uh, you know Frankie's explaining his situation back and forth. Uh, but you know, and uh, Frankie's actually also doing some background on Water Seven, Agua Laguna, which is the event here where half the island gets flooded out. Uh, and also a little bit of uh, information about the sea train, which they saw in the first volume that we went over, and a shipwright named Tom, which becomes very, very important. Uh, so here the CP9 finds out where they're at. And then uh, Usopp finally tells him what, uh, Frankie, what he plans on doing now that he, he's left Luffy's crew. He plans on taking the Merry Go back home and going back to East Blue, which is the ocean that uh, Usopp is from. Uh, which Frankie replies, uh, no, you won't be able to go back, not to the East Blue. It's too far. And uh, Frankie explains at that point that, the, that he's looked at the ship and the ship is toast. The ship is not going to make it on its next voyage. So he pretty much tells him, I'll help you dismantle it. And you kind of get a very emotional back and forth between uh, Usopp and Frankie, where Frankie's basically given Usopp, uh, you know, real life lessons right here in how this thing works. And even smacks him and shows him right here and you can see the damage to the uh, to the stern right here for the boat and the merry go is toast so but despite that his soap still wants to repair the damn boat and it's almost like a moment of emotion uh, for him he, he's like kind of beyond logic he doesn't care if the boat you know will kill him as he's going forward he has so much uh, nostalgia and memory for this boat that he doesn't uh, he doesn't really care he's, he's gonna repair it no matter what so uh, this kind of shows uh, has a flashback scene to the Skypea arc, where Usopp uh, ran it. For those of you who, who read the arc, basically there's a period in the Skypea arc, which is a previous story to Water Seven, where the boat was heavily damaged, and then the next morning it gets fully repaired. Uh, turns out it's basically like a uh, sailor spirit that came, uh, or a sailor's spirit, I should say, that came to repair the boat. Uh, but anyway, uh, CP9 shows up, and uh, <laughs> they kick the crap out of uh, out of Frankie's uh, two sisters, and then kick the crap out of Frankie himself. And uh, they find out that this warehouse actually has uh, meaning to uh, to Frankie, and that this is actually the original uh, warehouse for uh, Tom's Workers, which is the company that uh, Frankie worked Frankie worked for when he was young, along with Iceberg. Uh, and we get to learn about that throughout the rest of the volume. So the rest of the volume is essentially a flashback to, uh, to Frankie as he was young and explaining uh, Tom's workers. So you get Frankie as he was young. He's uh, known for building these weaponized battleships, so battle Frankies. 
and he's uh, kind of always constantly making these new battleships to fight sea monsters and pissing off Iceberg because he kind of like leaves all of this weaponry out in the middle of nowhere after he's done with it, with with building it. <laughs> and you get the introduction to introduction to Tom, who's a fish man, and uh, he's a like world famous shipwright, and he's uh, especially famous as we find out uh, later. Uh, for being the, the engineer who built uh, Gold Roger's uh, ship. So for those of you who aren't familiar with One Piece, Gold Roger is essentially the legendary uh, pirate figure in uh, the world of One Piece. Uh, he's the only one who, uh, I guess, circumnavigated the world and has uh, gone through the entire Grand Line, which is sort of like a you know really dangerous ocean in the One Piece universe. And uh, he has found the One Piece, which is uh, the namesake for the story, which is his treasure at the end of uh, at the end of the Grand Line. So uh, we find out that Tom is the one who designed that boat and built it for uh, Gold Roger, and in a way he had his hand in sort of creating this era of piracy within the world. So he gets sentenced to ex to be executed. Uh, but essentially, he's able to convince the judge not to execute him because he is currently working on a sea train, which we remember from the first volume, uh, which could potentially save Water 7 by opening up trade routes. Uh, because at this time, Water 7 is basically in a Great Depression, and the city is, uh, the island, I should say, is basically dying uh, from a lack of, uh, of industry and, and just uh, good, and good work for the most part. So uh, he gets a stay of execution. And uh, the crew just basically gets to work on the sea train to get a long montage and stuff of it. It's like great visual storytelling. This is like uh, the Japanese style of visual storytelling. Uh, just sort of that flashback scene and everything. Uh, I like this. So, yeah, you'll notice that in One Piece, whenever there's black borders or black backgrounds uh, around the panels, it usually denotes uh, a flashback. And uh, there are other mangas that also use this as well. Uh, but uh, just so for those of you who, who may not have known that, typically these black backgrounds uh, designate a flashback in a manga, right? So, anyhow, uh, turns out uh, they're able to get the, the boat to work, and it's a huge accomplishment. And Tom is about to essentially be pardoned, uh, having created this train that saved this island. Uh, but along comes this government agent called Spandom, and Spandom uh, is essentially your typical, uh, basically upwardly mobile, uh, cheese dick. <laughs> For those of you who ever run into those people who all they are are obsessed with, you know, basically making it to the next promotion or the next, uh, level in whatever stupid structure they're in. Spandom is, is kind of a character, character of all those types of, uh, personalities for the most part. So anyway, he threatens Tom because, uh, he knows Tom has the plans for the Pluton, or the Pluton, which is a weapon that was introduced in the previous volume. Essentially, it's one of the great weapons of the world. And uh, if anyone got a hold of it, it would be very, very, uh, very, very bad for the government. So Spandam, as a government agent, is uh, sort of trying to get it from Tom, though Tom is denying it exists. But what Tom does is he doesn't trust the government. So he gives the plans to uh, Iceberg and Frankie to uh, take care of uh, while he tries to kind of avoid this. And he also warns him of uh, Nico Robin. Which is really interesting. This is why Iceberg has such a problem with Nico Robin. Uh, anyhow, turns out on the day he's supposed to be pardoned, uh, the judge ship, which is the the courthouse, uh, basically gets bombed. And uh, what Spandam has done is he's taken all of the the battle Frankies that Frankie has left on the island and turned them into weapons, and is now attacking the ship. So uh, it's a great betrayal and a and a great uh, and a, and a basically a great uh, teaching moment for Frankie. Unfortunately, uh, the end result is uh, Tom, uh, in, despite the heroic efforts of Iceberg and Frankie, uh, Tom gets arrested again, and uh, they get set up for trial. And, and during this time, Frankie disavows making all of the, the battleships, and uh, Tom knocks him out and tells him, you know, it, you know, the the ship is not to be blamed for what happened, you know, you know, or or, uh, and you shouldn't be. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, ashamed of making these things. You know, it's kind of a, it's an interesting sort of point by Oda right here that the creator shouldn't feel ashamed for their creations, right? And in many ways, it's kind of funny. Like, you can almost twist this argument to say, 
you know, it's not the boat that that did uh, this; it's the people on the boat that did this, which is kind of interesting coming from you know a Japanese creator right here, but uh, very fascinating. But anyhow, uh, turns out uh, Tom, what Tom does is he's uh, he decides to sacrifice himself for Frankie and Iceberg. So he's able to get Frankie and Iceberg acquitted for the attack on the courthouse. Uh, but at the same time, he gets sent to, uh, to Innis Lobby, which is sort of the main judicial center of One Piece, to get executed. And uh, he actually, ironically enough, gets taken on the sea train he designed to get executed. Uh, and Frankie has one last stand against it. Uh, and it's a really emotional moment, very One Piece right here. Just, you know, him not willing to give up, you know, Standing, you know, him between uh, the train and, and his mentor, his father figure being uh, executed. And uh, Frankie is uh, basically run over, and that's the end of the volume. So, also kind of the end of the flashback for the most part. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, great uh, volume for the most part. Uh, it's mainly, I would say about more than 50% of it is a flashback, but the flashback story is fantastic. It's classic Oda, very emotional, very... Uh, very strong human element to it that really gets you into the characters and really gets you into the character Frankie, right? Up until this time, he's kind of a weirdo that wears a Speedo and, you know, does this whole super thing. But uh, this story kind of gives a background to him that makes you really like him a lot more. And then the volumes that proceed make you like him even more. You know, it, it, one of the things that makes Water 7 so great is you start off really disliking one of the characters that they introduced, Frankie, in the beginning just because what he does to Soap and the whole pirate crew. And by the time you reach to the very end, you're like, dude, this character is the shit. I can't wait for, like, more stories with him, right? <laughs> Anyhow, I've, I've gone on long enough around here. These volumes are a little bit long to uh, review, but... Uh... Anyhow, that's the video. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. If you got any comments about One Piece Water 7, uh, Volume 37, leave it down below, and I will see you next time.